Well, good morning. I thought I'd uh, take a little time here and do a quick little demonstration of, uh, of my HP 853A. This particular analyzer is fitted with a uh, HP 85A or HP 8559A spectrum analyzer plug-in. This particular plug-in covers 10 megahertz to 21 gigahertz. Uh, the frequency selection can be done out of one of six bands. It has a, a usable amplitude range of uh, minus 111 to plus 30 dBm. And uh, it has a frequency span uh, range that can go from as much as 300 megahertz per division all the way down to 10 kilohertz per division. And it has a uh, resolution bandwidth of 3 megahertz all the way down to 1 kilohertz and has a built-in uh, uh, attenuator that is adjustable from uh, 10 to 70 dB and uh, has a number of digital functions such as uh, being the ability to do uh, provide a couple of traces uh, do max hold, you can store traces you can do digital averaging and you can also compare traces and do trace subtraction so what I want to do here is just basically, let's see, we'll turn on a signal here. So we have a frequency of 145 megahertz at minus 10 dB. Well, what I'm going to do is we're going to take the, uh, the signal generator and uh, we're going to set it to minus 100 dBm. And now we're going to see if we can see this signal. So the first thing I'm going to do is increase the reference level to minus 50 dBm which means the top graticule line is now instead of zero it is now minus 50 and I'm going to reduce the span per division so we can get a little no lower noise floor so we'll go down to 10 kilohertz per division and all we're seeing right now is noise so I want to use the uh, digital averaging function to see if we can see the signal and there it is right there. It's a little off. Let's see here if we can fix this. Let's go back to minus 10 dBm. Oops. Reduce this back down here. We will make this little adjustment here. Okay, now back to minus 100 go back up to here and we'll re-enable this digital averaging and there's the signal and that's pretty darn close to minus 100 dBm according to this instrument noise floor <coughs> darn near minus 110 the uh, the listed spec in the uh, manual is minus 111 so that's pretty darn good for an instrument as old as this thing is and you know while this instrument may be obsolete and uh, you know there's certainly better spectrum analyzers for the price you pay for something like this this is uh, you know very usable so anyway turn that back off and I'll uh, We'll move on to, to another demonstration. Now, another thing these uh, these older spectrum analyzers do not have, such as this one here, are on-screen readouts. You can change your parameters all you want, but all it's ever going to show is just the trace and the channel that you're writing on. Now, through the magic of HPIB, we could change this. I can simply type in everything I need and send it to the analyzer and we can put screen readouts right on the display now they're not going to change when I change the knob these are all done manually but it's a nice function to have and these readouts will actually print out on the plotter alright so now we're going to send this out to my trusty plotter so the first thing we do is we press the Graticule button and the plotter will now draw the Graticule and then the on-screen uh, readouts. Alright, 
press the trace button. And there we go. That's uh, <laughs> nice functionality. All right, next thing I'll do is we'll take the uh, resolution bandwidth and we'll widen it out a bit so we can get a more sloped curve. And we'll once again press the trace button. Yeah, so now that allows me to superimpose more than one trace on top of the graph. 